Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're gonna be going over open hole flute pad installation. Uh, we are gonna do this in two parts. I know it says three parts as well. You don't know, it's actually three parts. This is part two of three, part two of three, two of three. Uh, we're gonna just show you how to prepare the grommet and how to prepare the pad because in the last stream that we did preparing for a closed hole installation, we did a couple of different closed hole pads and it is a fairly involved process. Yeah. So we decided to break it up into two videos. This is part two of three, I got it now. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna show you guys, like I said, some tools, um, the grommet types that we're gonna use, how to prepare, uh, repair if needed or adjust, and then the installation of the pad is gonna come next week. Um, so Leroy, just to kind of, um, to kind of get my mind around this, sure. what is the main difference between a closed hole pad and a open hole pad? It's a good question. And other than the hole. Other than the <laughs> hole itself, right? Um, actually, it's, it's, just, it's just how and what holds the pad in the pad cup. So for a closed hole, um, a couple weeks ago we went over this, but um, obviously it's closed, like Rich said. But on the but the the thing that retains the pad in there is a screw and a washer. Okay. Now again, Rich just said it. Open hole, it's different. It's open. And the thing that holds it in there is uh, what's what's called a grommet. So that little metal piece right there that that contacts the pad, that's a grommet that holds it in. That is all that holds that in there. And then the other part, and it's comprised of two parts, the grommet itself, and then the little, the little chimney on the inside of the pad cup that it presses onto. That's all, that's all that holds the pad in on the open hole keys. Okay, so the way that we fix the pad into the pad cup is the main difference, basically. Correct. Yep. Okay, cool. Can we show them some of the tools that Absolutely. they're gonna need to install and adjust grommets. Absolutely. So this would be pretty much everything that you would need to do from start to finish. We're only going to cover part of it, but this would pretty much be everything that you would need. So um, maybe some calipers to, to double check either the pad diameter or um, something with the, the grommet, just in case you need to fix it or repair it. Um, two kinds of pens, regular ballpoint pen and then a felt. Some sort of scissors. I like these kind because they're small and they're spring loaded and they're easy. Uh, these are actually sewing scissors. Tweezers for fat finger guys like me. You can grab smaller stuff. Um, pads in case you need to replace it. Uh, an open an open hole punch flute set. And we'll go over that in a minute. For while you're shimming, uh, clear fingernail polish or our cool little uh, water soluble glue shims, some sort of hammer or mallet, um, the flute tool, and yes, it is, that's exactly what it is. It is a flute tool. And this is, it's got a couple different things on it and we'll go over this um, as we go on here. Um, sort of, some sort of pad prick or a sharp device to remove the pad. Um, this little cool grommet removing tool, it is very cool because if you see really carefully, it's got the beveled edge, which really, really helps to get underneath that grommet between the pad and the grommet. It's very useful. Um, if you don't have something like that or don't have access to it at the moment, um, at the time, you can take a regular old pad slick, put a little, put a little groove on the side, and then just kind of put a little, um, also a little bevel on there, and that'll do almost the same thing. The tool is better, but that will be better than like a screwdriver, and we'll explain something about that later too. Um, screwdrivers to remove the keys and then obviously the flute itself. Cool. And let's go over the grommet. We've got okay. a couple of different types of grommets and then how to adjust them and repair yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. So there are, there are two kinds of grommets. The standard one that we'll get is this one right here, the metal one. Um, any grommet basically will press fit onto that chimney inside the key. So basically to reinstall it, you'll, you'll take this part, push it in, and then it'll, there is a tool that actually does this, but you basically push it in there and then it'll press fit onto that key. Um, the other style that we have is a Delrin washer. 
these are awesome for a number of different reasons, and we'll go over that here in a minute. But it, it, you, it works exactly the same. You take any open hole key that has the chimney on there, you take the grommet, you use the proper tool to push that on there, and then that press fits on there and holds the pad in the pad cup. Very, very cool. So we've got that, and then let's show them, say, um... Oh, I like that one. Yeah, it was pretty fast taking that. Uh, There's no pad in there, so, ah, okay. so <laughs> I, I can be a little quicker. <laughs> can, we, can you also show them if they have a grommet that maybe needs some adjusting? Absolutely. Um, that's, where, that's where this little good guy comes in. So this flute tool, uh, this, this little uh, piece here is tapered. So this is actually useful for two different things. So if you want to... Um, if the grommet itself, and this is for metal ones, Delrins, if they're damaged, just toss them and then replace it. They're inexpensive and it's easy to do. Um, for metal ones, if, um, if you want to fix them, it's basically, it looks like a little top hat with no, with no top on it. So it's got that little, it's got that little step in there. Uh, what you can do is, uh, depending on the size of the grommet, uh, some of them can be a little bit smaller, uh, but if it goes on the tool and it bottoms out, it's not a problem. All you have to do is basically think of it as uh, like a like a little mandrel so you can go on there and just kind of either either with a teeny little hammer or if you want to just press that if the if this part of the grommet is bent it's really thin so you don't have to use a lot of pressure to do it so all you'd have to do is just kind of push on it and roll it just like you would any sort of dent work so that would be if you need to fix or repair the grommet okay now if for some reason the key the inside chimney here is bent same idea you basically take this this tool right there you return it this way because this part comes into con that part inside comes into contact with the grommet first so you want to make sure that you adjust this side and depending on how it feels when you push it in sometimes you also want to do the other side too to make sure that it's an even feel okay so you basically just push it you push the key in there and see this actually bottoms out Mm -hmm. So you'd basically just kind of like push it and turn it a little bit to try to get that shape either more rounded or if it's bent to just kind of put it back in place. And then depending on how the grommet feels when you put it back in, you might need to do the backside too. And then just basically do the same thing. Push it in there, kind of push and twist. And then that'll, that'll help reshape that and then the grommet should fit better. Okay, so we've got a little bit of grommet shaping mm -hmm. and fixing. Um, the second step after you've kind of modified or got your grommet game under control yeah. is to label these parts so they can be reassembled for when we're doing our pad leveling. Correct. Um, and that's important because uh, trying to eliminate any variables, any weird variables um, as you're putting stuff back together is key. No pun intended. Uh, but no, so so when you're putting when you're taking stuff apart and putting it back together, having it back together as close or as perfect to the way you took it apart will eliminate any variables of any weirdness, whether it be in the pad or the grommet or whatever. So if you're when you're doing your shimming, it won't look like you put a boulder in something that needed like a thousandths and all of a sudden it's like holy pete man i put it looks like i put six thousandths in there but mm -hmm. maybe the pad is like 180 and it's just weird mm -hmm. so doing and labeling stuff will help eliminate any of those weirdnesses so i've kind of done this already but i'll show you how to do it uh, you can take either like a little poking device like this or a screwdriver preferably one that you don't care too much about um, and then use just use the edge to basically go in and kind of basically scratch like a Roman numeral on it. Basically trying to line up the back of the grommet to the back of the key cup. I know you probably won't be able to see this, but so I made a mark right here that lines up with the back of the key arm. So when I put that grommet back in there, I know exactly where that thing's supposed to go. Now, why do you not use just like a felt tip Sharpie there like or, a Sharpie? A, or a fine point? Um, that's a good question, actually. And the big reason is, is because a lot of times you're either touching that area or doing something 
um, the Sharpie, unfortunately, will rub off, mm. especially at least with my the way my fingers work. Okay. Um, this way, uh, two things actually. This way, it'll it's there, so you it'll never rub off. It won't do anything. The other, there's a couple other cool things too. Is you know, say say the the customer plays it for a couple of years or whatever, and then goes, oh man, I need this adjusted, and they bring it back to you. You're gonna look. You're gonna take that apart and go. Oh, I just helped myself out, you know. And you removed a step. You already know it's done. And what, which way to put that grommet on, and you're good to go. The other nice thing is, say if somebody's out gigging, not a, not in the area, and mm-hmm. they can't come to you, right? Um, you have helped them out. You've helped the next technician out, and they're gonna look at that and go, man, whoever that was, thank you. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna, and it'll help them out and make their job a little easier as well. So then at this point, the, the grommet's labeled. I'll take my little nifty little tool and I will, as best as possible, show it while I'm holding it. Usually it's best to kind of have it on your bench and hold it so it doesn't move. Um, for viewing purposes, I'm going to hold it up here so you can kind of see what's going on. So that beveled edge, I'm basically going to take and kind of walk back and forth until it goes in between the pad and the grommet. Um, again, this bevel is really important because having it, having the bevel the way it is helps eliminate damaging the pad. So if we're just leveling the pad because if the pad's in good condition, trying not to destroy the pad is good because then you have to replace it. So just basically work it underneath there and then slowly work around the pad. And then eventually that grommet will come out of there. The next step, and again, I've already done this, but there's a little mark there where that pad is. It did turn, so uh, the pad turned a little bit when I removed it, and that's actually a perfect reason why to mark this pad. So before I did it, this line was lined up with the key arm, just like we did two weeks ago when mm-hmm. we were shimming for the closed hole. Okay. Same exact, same exact reason. You want to put that line on there so you can line up to the key arm so you know exactly where to put that pad when you're putting it back in the pad cup. And then at that point, you just take your little pad prick or something sharp, very gently take and remove the pad you are good to go. So when we are preparing, Leroy, if, if the, because what they're seeing is a pad that's in the pad cup. Correct. But most likely if this was a repair situation, mm-hmm. there would be no pad in the pad cup. You'd just be labeling, you'd have to get a pad first. Correct. So how do you get a closed hole pad and make it into a open hole pad? Good question. That's where that's that's where this little that's where this little device comes into play. This is a really really helpful and cool tool. It is a great investment, and sometimes it can be it can be looked at as as a pricey tool or something like why would I ever use this? But this thing is a great investment because if you're doing if you're stocking flute pads or if you're trying to even if it's a small amount of flute pads, trying to have both open and closed hole, you're basically having to double your inventory all the time. Mm-hmm. This is a cool way to basically go, oh, I just want X number of flute pads. And if you have something that's open, hold, go, oh, sweet. I got this cool little tool where I can just go, you can just pop the hole in it, be on your way, and then you're good to go. So the open hole uh, flute pad punch that we have here at Music Medic, this is a die set where mm-hmm. the cutter kind of rides through the, the parts and it doesn't bottom out at the end. Correct. So, Leroy, I'll let you get that set up. And Cool. Uh, but traditionally, uh, other flute pad punches, the cutter itself bottoms out on a punching block or on the bench itself, and those cutters can get dull a little faster over time. And what you're going to see when Leroy, he's got the pad installed, he's going to put the cap on, and if he turns it around the other way, he'll see the... Uh, you can see the bottom of the die set and the cutter itself doesn't come out. It doesn't protrude from that. Right. So you can set that anywhere. Actually, I will show that too. I'll take the pad out real quick so I can. Hmm. So it's bottomed out. And I will, and I'll show you too. See how it's got that little horseshoe clip right there? That 
and basically will stop this little cutter from going in all the way. So that's as far as it'll go. If you look carefully in there, it's, I know it's really hard to see people, so I apologize. But if I, if I run something across here, so if I do this, oh yeah, there's, not, there's nothing protruding. So I'll even take this out. Show yeah, that's a nice, yeah, that's a nice little tool set. Nothing and, there. And it's going to keep the, col uh, the cutter sharper over time. Correct, yeah, because it's not contacting anything. It's not burying any, anything. Cool. Just the pad. So when they have their pad in there, does it matter uh, which side goes into the die set, the skin side or the backing side? Um, I, have, I have done this a lot, and I haven't run into any, I'll say any issues either way. Um, if someone has a personal preference, then that's their personal preference. There's no, I'll say, right or wrong way to do it. If one way works better for you than the other, then that's the right way for you. But for okay. me, it's just kind of been throw it in there, make sure that at least it won't split the skin, and then you're good to go. The other thing that's nice about this is that this little donut here kind of presses down a little bit on the pad to help keep it in place too. So we'll put that together. I will come along the side here because I don't want to mm -hmm. destroy our cool little whiteboard. And normally you would be on a bench and this would, you know, we're in a little video room here. Yeah. And normally you'd be on a sturdy bench. You'd have a, a heavy mallet or what kind of mallet um, are you using? The two I usually prefer to use is one of these two. Okay. Rawhide and yes, it has been used that much. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like this. It's got a little more weight to it. Um, double sided. Uh, Delrin plastic on one side and brass on the other. Uh, I would highly advise never to use the brass side on something like this, uh, mainly because it's you're basically metal on metal, and even if one's harder than the other, eventually the tool itself will start to flare out, and then it it becomes a little less useful. Okay. So I'll be using the Delrin side, and pardon the noise and pardon the I'll say the slight weirdness because. Not my bench, but you know, sure. we're, we're doing cool stuff here. So we're gonna... You can actually hear it when it right. comes all the way through. And you can see too that that thing is bottomed out again. You know, this, there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's pushed the little donut that it's cut out underneath. And basically what you wanna do at this point is just take it apart. You can see that the cutter actually cut the pad and then from here, just kind of just push that out, and then voila, there's your open hole pad. Cool. So we've prepared the pad. That's ready to go into the cup. Correct. We've prepared the grommet. Correct. Um, so let's, for the final thing that we're going to talk about in this preparing for installation of an open hole flute pad, let's just talk about grommet height. Yes. And can, if you want to show them the open hole flute pad tool. Yes. Um, and it's got a little secret to yeah. it, and yeah, we'll this, show them how to do that height. Yeah, this looks really simple, right? And we're only thinking, oh, got a cool little handle and this one thing. Well, it's got a little secret compartment, so we, we like to incognito things, so it's all good. So this back end pops off, and inside of there is the open hole grommet setter. So we just kind of take one side, one part out, and then, oh, I put it in too hard last time. There we go. <laughs> See, that's me trying to put it together too much. So the setter comes in two parts, the bottom and the top. And this little part here screws and it's threaded to adjust. And that's what Rich is, was just talking about, to adjust the height. So as best as I can, I'm gonna hold this and I'm going to screw this in. And then I want you to see that it pushes the bottom part See how it's pushing that bottom part out? Mm -hmm. That's how you adjust the height of this setter to the proper height of the grommet of, that you're removing that you need to reset it at. And the best and easiest way that I can recommend to do that is um, when you're taking the flute apart, as long as the pad that you're looking at looks flat and it's not like pushed or dished in, that's the height you're going to want to do it at. And then basically what you would want to do is for our viewing pleasure, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it instead of putting it on the bench. But when you're 
I'll say working on a flute at your bench, I would highly recommend basically setting it down like this, setting it like this, and then slowly holding this part and then screwing it down until you just see it lift, lift off of the grommet and then back it off a little bit so it rests back on it. So, so this is kind of, again, this is, I'm going to be holding it a little weird here, but you'll be able to see it lift off of there here in just a second. So basically you're using the, the pad cup and the orientation of the grommet as your gauge to set the height. Exactly. Okay, cool. So see how there's a little wiggle there? That's a lot of wiggle actually. But what I would do at this point is I would just back that off slowly until, it, until there's no wiggle and it's resting on there. And then that would be your height. And then you would basically just take that off and you're good to go. The great thing about setting it is that this screw right here, this threaded part, it catches on this Delrin part pretty nicely. So it doesn't, it's not, it's not super loose in there. There is enough drag where that will actually stay in position. So you can just leave it in one spot. I don't want to say set it and forget it, but once you have it set, you don't really have to worry about checking it each and every time. And you're going to be working on your bench. So things will be a little more stable. Correct. Cool. Let's talk about, uh, I just have a couple of questions for sure. you. What if you have a grommet that is um, cracked? Have you ever had that? And, and, and how do you deal with that? How do you diagnose that? That never happens. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, no, it, it ha unfortunately it happens quite frequently. Uh, and mainly because, um, because the metal is really thin on these grommets, um, sometimes either over time or if um, someone has push this in improperly, like pushed it too far down, it'll put undue stress on this, on this little part right here and it, and it can and will crack. Um, there's two, there's a couple ways to figure out how that, if it's cracked or not. So say you take, say you take the grommet off and you put a pad in there and then you set the grommet, but it doesn't feel like it's catching and you know it's not catching because you can either see it move and you can see the pad actually push it up off the thing, more than likely that grommet's cracked or broken and you're gonna have to replace it. Um, the, other, the other way would be to get like, a, like the little tapered mandrel like this or something a little bit bigger to get like a good amount of, not a good amount, but a decent amount of, I'll say, tension on it mm -hmm. and then push it on there until it stops and then try to push it a little bit farther and then turn it around. If you see like a hairline crack or anything anywhere, mm. obviously it's cracked okay. and it would need to be replaced. To try to, I'll say, fix that, it's really not, if you want to try it, I would never say not try something, but it's, to try to solder and fix that is very, almost insanely difficult because it has to be smooth on basically both sides and then the solder point isn't really strong and then the metal's weak and, and thin. So it's usually better just to replace, like, replace that. it. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, speaking of replacements, um, the Delrin, uh, the Jim Schmidt Delrin bushings, that's something that we have at musicmedic.com. Mm -hmm. um, is there an advantage to those, say they need, you know, versus the metal ones? Versus the metal ones? Um, the biggest advantage in my opinion is, um, is that you'll know 100% if these are airtight and they're a lot easier to remove while you're doing shimming. So um, if you kind of if you saw our video two weeks ago when we were shimming for the closed hole, there's times where you have to remove, like take the washer off, put it back on, off, on, you know, two, three, four, maybe even more times depending on what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, and with a washer and a screwdriver, it's not that it's not too bad, right? Because it's just a screw. You just unscrew it and put it back. It's not a big deal. The grommets are a little harder to deal with because you're having to deal with height. You're having to deal with trying to take it off and you know using tools that actually touch the pad so you're trying to not mess the pad up you're not trying to tear the skin there's a lot of fat a lot of extra factors that go into removing the grommet and putting it back on that don't exist when you're doing just like the closed hole one so the so the delrin ones are very cool in the sense that once you push this thing on there and again that's just with my finger but you would use an actual setter the cool thing is you can pretty much take your fingers and, doop, and just take it right off. 
all you have to do is basically just take two fingers and then just go on either side and literally pop it off of there. Uh, and even if you don't want to do that, even if you use, want to use one of these tools, it comes off a lot easier just because it is Delrin. And although it comes off easier, the Delrin still grabs the metal just as well as the metal one. So don't worry about it like releasing and like the pad falling out. Um, it still grips the metal just as well as the metal grommet. It just comes off a lot easier because of the material. Okay, cool. Well, Leroy, thank you so much for explaining all that and answering yeah. questions. And uh, next week, we're going to be going over the actual installing of the pad in the pad cup, doing some right. shimming and leveling. Um, this has been our Wednesday Wisdom, where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. If you like these live stream educational videos that we do, please feel free to, to like them, share them, subscribe, and we'll be able to get you more of content like this for those of you who want to know about basic band instrument repair. Um, uh, in that regard, we also have a saxophone basics class coming up on August 23rd to the 25th with Ryan. And then for you professional technicians, we're going to be giving an advanced course on clarinet tenon sleeving. Uh, that's going to be on August 19th. So check out musicmedic.com for those educational uh, series of videos and classes that we're doing, as well as the tools that we have for all of this flute work. Yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It's a good crazy. It is a good crazy. And on that note, that's going to do it for today. So happy repairing.